Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Thursday, October 15th, 2015. Here are our top stories. Tonight, a look back at Hillary Clinton's performance at the Democratic debate as she flip-flops and revises history. I'm a progressive, but I'm a progressive who likes to get things done. And I know how to find common ground. So, and yeah. I know Oh, sorry, I'm sleeping my mouth a little bit. She doesn't want to use the S word, socialist. Then start your Thursday off right or left with a little boogie woogie from Bernie Sanders on The Ellen Show. Plus, the Pope is now asking for forgiveness after gay sex scandals have rocked the Vatican and Rome. It is inevitable that there will be scandals. And what will DARPA dream up next? Drones that vanish into thin air? That can't be good. All that plus much more coming up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. behavior that spurred me to do the research to develop a true nutraceutical formula that was designed to smooth out and help children focus. All of our children are hit with modern mind control. Television, music, fast food, GMOs, sugars, you name it. Young humans have not yet developed their nervous system and are being hammered daily by globalist concoctions. It's no wonder they can't focus and calm down and then are put on dangerous psychotropic drugs. Working with my team, we set out to find the best formula with the highest quality ingredients that children would actually like and take. We worked with the leading manufacturer in nutritional supplements that are safe for children to bring you the most affordable and powerful calming formula out there. Introducing Child Ease with herbs and calming extracts like chamomile and lemon balm and essential nutrients that taste great. Obtain your Child Ease today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's Child Ease exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. <laughs> Well, one of the key things that came out of the debate two nights ago was the refusal of the other four candidates to challenge Hillary Clinton on anything. And as a result of that, we have seen the media, the Democrat leftist media, as well as the Democrat National Committee coalesce around Hillary Clinton to try to keep Joe Biden, the only person who would really seriously challenge her, I think, to keep him out of the race. And of course, we saw Bernie Sanders dancing on the Ellen DeGeneres show, uh, basically dancing to Hillary's tune. That's what we saw in the debate as he tried to deflect criticism away from her national security violations, just calling it her emails. He says he's sick of hearing about her emails. Well, I'm sick of seeing this being spun as something as trivial, trivial as her emails. This is about the new national religion in Washington, and that is national security. Everything the government does is based on national security. Everything must be subordinate to it. Our rights, the rule of law, everything must be subordinate to national security. And yet you have someone here who willfully violated national security for whatever purposes, and she's not going to be held accountable. And it's the candidates themselves who are pushing away this criticism. Now, today we saw from the Democrat National Committee a chairwoman who is, who is a, not a chairwoman, but a committee woman who is on the, uh, that DNC committee saying that the party is clearing a path for Hillary because the women in charge want it that way. Well, who would those women be? That would be the, essentially the lesbian lefties who are supporting her candidacy. This committee woman rattled off a list of women at the top of the party hierarchy, said that two vice chairs helped to craft a decision that this summer in order to favor Clinton. She said that her party could promote Hillary because she's a woman, and they risk having her implode after she's nominated. In other words, let's not get into the situation of pushing her because she's a woman. And if you remember at the very end of the debate, Hillary, when asked the question, how would your administration differ from Obama's? And she says, well, I'm a woman. In other words, I, I get a chance to do this because we've done the identity politics thing, electing a black man. Now we need to do the identity politics thing and elect a woman simply because I'm a woman. But this is a woman who is on the DNC and says we don't want to go down that path. We don't want to have somebody who is not challenged but put into place simply because she's a woman and then find out in the general election that she's not up to the candidacy. She says, I haven't heard anyone say we should make Hillary undergo a trial by fire. To the contrary, the women in charge seem eager more and more to have her skate into the general election. It's not healthy for the party 
if we get behind a woman because she's a woman and risk having her implode after she's nominated because she isn't tested sufficiently. They go on to say this time around the DNC has sanctioned only six debates. Offering more might have the effect of giving an indecisive Vice President Joe Biden a broader opportunity to jump into the race and give Clinton a formidable challenge. But of course, that's not going to happen. We see increasingly the media coming out and saying if Biden's only rationale is that Clinton is tanking, then he's no longer an option. And that's a uh, longtime Democrat strategist, Stephanie Cutter. She worked for President Obama's reelection and she said Biden could now, quote, risk a backlash from Democrats if he runs. Look at the headlines from the mainstream media. Here's one from NBC. And of course, NBC has been relentlessly promoting Hillary Clinton. They had her on Saturday Night Live in order to do a bartender scene where she sings and talks about candidacy with a, an actor who's dressed up like Hillary Clinton, trying to personalize her, trying to make her look authentic and genuine, even though we know she's a cold, calculating, ambitious robot. And that's what we saw presented in a very light way. And they let her get away with it in the debate the other night. NBC says, say no, Joe. Uh, they're telling Joe not to run. MSNBC says Joe Biden's new political reality. Things are getting tight for him. NPR, Joe Biden's window may have just closed. They say he's been Biden this time, of course. The would-be candidate who never really seemed like he wanted to be a candidate. See, they're pushing him away even farther. Wall Street Journal, Democrats press Joe Biden to make a decision on running for the presidency. They say a polished performance from Hillary Clinton, and they even, they use that word multiple times. If you look at these articles, everybody's talking about what a great performance Hillary Clinton gave. Yes, she gave a performance on Saturday Night Live. She's given performances on other things. She was asked a lot of softball questions the following Monday on uh, an NBC morning news program, but a debate shouldn't be a performance. It ought to be a discussion of the issues. And the fact that they continually refer to it as a performance shows how carefully crafted it was in order to help Hillary Clinton. This is even a retired Teamster official, William G. Mar Marrow uh, from New Hampshire said, it was a great performance. It would be tough for Joe Biden to come in now. Everybody, even the people who support her, have no problems anymore with this political system that we have in terms of calling these debates performances. Now, they also talk about the real deadlines that may be looming before Joe Biden. They say there are some deadlines for filing. The Georgia deadline is going to be coming up October the 29th. There's some more deadlines coming up in other states on the 6th of November, the 9th, the 17th, the 30th. That's Alabama, Arkansas, Michigan, and Florida, respectively. They say the deadlines could be subject to change, and they're not necessarily hard and fast deadlines. But who controls those deadlines? So these deadlines are set by the Democrat parties in the various states, and it could change. But it's going to depend, of course, as to who's in charge of the Democrat Party. There certainly is a contingency that doesn't like Hillary Clinton, that likes Joe Biden. All of them were running, uh, along with Barack Obama, Hillary, and Biden were running. And he got the vice presidential nod. So he has, nod, he has a lot of people who are supporting him in the Democrat Party who would like to see him run. But it looks now like they are coalescing around Hillary after the very first debate. Now, he said just before the debate, when you tell the truth in Washington— it's called a gaffe, trying to position himself as being someone who's authentic. But I think it was very telling that Hillary had such a great performance, she had no gaffes because she didn't tell the truth. A key issue here is what she said about the Trans-Pacific Partnership. They called her on flip-flopping in her position. And she said, well, I really didn't flip-flop on TPP. I waited until the details came out, and then I decided that I didn't like it. And remember when we were watching this, we called her on this. Let's play that clip again. Well, even with this TPP flip-flop, you, you remember how she held her tongue and she said, I'm going to wait till the negotiations are over to say something about it. And it wasn't until days after the negotiations were over that she says, well, this version of it, I don't agree with it. Meanwhile, for years, I think, what, 45 times? And has she really been able to see it? And only the people who go through special non-disclosure agreements that are also members of Congress or the Senate are allowed to see that. How, how did she see it? How does she know what's in it? Uh, we don't know. Let's, uh, we're going to ask some questions. Let's pick up with the audio feed, folks. 
Some Democrats believe you change your positions based on political expediency. You are against same-sex marriage, now you're for it. You defended President Obama's go, immigration policies, right now you say they're too harsh. Won't you even make eye contact with her? Deal. Dozens of times <laughs> you even called it the gold standard. He's like, now, I'm sorry, Ms. Clinton, week, I'm sorry. It. Will you say anything? Of course, it was Cokie Roberts well, actually, that says she knows everything about everything, over every the course issue. Of my entire life, I have so he just hit her with all the things she flip-flopped on right off the bat. I've been consistent over my entire life. Let's get this out of the way. Absorb new information. I do wow. know and just completely deny the world. Everything yeah. that the voters are concerned deal. with, he hit her all in one piece. State three years ago. <laughs> that I hope one question, so they can get that out of the way. And it was just fine. Oh, clear wow. the air here. Yeah. Last week, and in looking at it, it didn't meet my standards. My standards for. Can I get a little more audio here? For Americans for yeah. raising How can she for even Americans. say the word standard? And I want to make sure <laughs> that I can look into standard. the eyes of any middle class mm -hmm. American and say, this will help raise commitment. You know, when I left law school, my first job was with the Children's Defense Fund. And for all the years since, I have been focused on how we're going to unstack the deck and how we're going to make it possible for more people to have the experience I had. You know, to be able to come from a grandfather who was a factory worker, a father who was a small business person, and now asking the people of America to elect me president. Just for the record, are you a progressive or are you a moderate? I'm a progressive, but I'm a progressive who likes to get things done. And I know how to find common ground. So, and yeah. I know how oh, to sorry, stand I must speak my, my mouth a little bit. <laughs> she doesn't want to use the S word, that I've had, socialist. Even but you have to understand, they love to play with semantics. So again, that was our live coverage at the time of the debate, and we immediately pointed out that nobody gets to see that unless they sign non-disclosure agreements and go through a lot, of, a lot of other red tape, and most people in, in Congress haven't bothered to go through it. As a matter of fact, who would show that to Hillary Clinton, someone who is known for not taking security seriously? Maybe she would have put the TPP on her server or shared it with some of her staff. The secret would have been out. The American public would have known how they're going to be screwed by the multinational corporations that she has previously supported, but now claims that she doesn't support. Uh, clearly, that's not the case. And somebody asked the White House press secretary, Josh Ernest, about this, and he said, yeah, I noticed that too. He says, details do matter. And I look forward to, as soon as possible, being able to put forward the text of the agreement so that everybody can review it and make their own judgment. In other words, yeah, it still hasn't been made public. And he came about as close as he could to proving the point that she was lying. But we all know that she was lying about that. Now, the other things that were very interesting in the debate, I think, is the fact that they were, had both candidates, both uh, Sanders and Clinton, because the other three really didn't do anything to establish themselves. They're polling essentially at zero. They didn't choose to attack Hillary Clinton. They said they want to make every public college and university in this country tuition free. That's what Sanders said. Clinton said essentially the same thing. We want to enable anyone to go to college. And again, when they say anyone, you have to understand what they're talking about is anyone in the world. They don't have to be an American citizen. They can come here. We will pay for their college all the way through graduate school, presumably. And that will be at taxpayer expense. As a matter of fact, that will come out of your property taxes for your home. Maybe that's a way that they're going to enact Agenda 21 to make housing so unaffordable that no one will be able to live in anything other than about one or 200 square feet. And Clinton laughingly said, I have been as transparent as I know how to be. Yet, as they point out in an AP story, she's yet to explain how the server was set up, how it was serviced, whether she performed, informed the State Department about her decision to use a private system, and most importantly, how she protected it from hacking attempts. And again, the sacred cow of the American government, national security, is the issue here. Just like it was with Bill Clinton. We were told, well, they tried to impeach him because he had an affair with somebody. No, they tried to impeach him because he lied under oath. He's an attorney. He's a president. When you lie under oath, no matter what the subject is, it didn't really matter what he was lying under oath about. The fact that he committed perjury was a crime, and that's what they tried to impeach him for. The fact that she would violate national security procedures are what's really important, even more important than any kind of uh, information about Benghazi that they might discover in her emails. It's the violation of security protocols willfully done by Hillary Clinton. Now. One of the other things that they talked about, of course, they dance around the issue of the Federal Reserve. They want to talk about Wall Street, but they don't really want to talk about the core issue, which is the Federal Reserve. We had a, uh, a, a on CNBC, we had Dick Bove, and this is somebody who is part of a investment uh, group. It's the Rafferty 
Capital Markets. He's a vice president of 